Oh, we all got it. We all got it. Okay. Shit. I know this man is happy to see that we all have our supply of miracle food. Man, get up out here today, man. So we all heard the news last week about Jay-Z selling the majority stake of title to Twitter CEO Jack Dorsey's company he owns called Square and himself. Well, DJ Academics, man, he really had something to say and really just brought back to our remembrance what exactly Jay-Z said when he purchased title. I'm going to play with Academics here just a little bit, and I think it's a good uh, conversation to have today. He's pretty much accusing Jay-Z of not doing it for black people and using a bait-and-switch tactic and selling his company to the white man. Let's, Let's get it. I respect Jay-Z's business model. I think he's a great businessman. I do look at people just blindly sucking them off and, and basically saying, yo, just look at this, man. Jay-Z bought a company. He said it was for black creators. He said people shouldn't support Apple and Spotify because they're white-owned. And the, he wanted to have something for the culture, for the artists, by the artists. And he wanted to keep it black-owned, and he wanted to do it that way. He did many B-side concerts and shit like that, talking about black excellence, black power. You should support him because he was running a black business, even though we found out later when they went to Sweden at the, at the title headquarters, pretty much not one of the employees or the higher executive people at Tidal were black. It was pretty much only Jay-Z, right? However, um, it was still preached and put forth to us as this is black excellence. You got supported if you support black people. Well, Jay-Z sold a third of the shares to Sprint about a year or two ago. Two ago for 200 million and he just sold the rest of the shares including all the artist shares to square which is owned by jack dorsey the same person who owns twitter and essentially if you don't know um the streaming app title now is jack dorsey's so the black owned product is now owned by jack dorsey the white man right again Jay-Z is a classic bait-and-switch person. And I think that's the only thing I don't like about the way he goes about things. I think he does his business how he should do it. But he is one of the people who will say, hey, why are you not going to fuck with me? I'm black. Yo, I'm doing it for black people. But he's not doing it for black people. He's doing it for his own selfish means. It's nothing wrong with what Jay's doing. But it is something wrong when you're constantly guilting people to make it seem like you're going for some. All right, so I'm going to stop it right there. And let's go back a little bit, Sam, man. Um, title comes out. I forget exactly what year. Yeah. You know, not when it came out, but when Jay-Z gets hold of it. Yep. You know, he pushed his whole campaign. You get six months, you know what I mean, free or something like that. But he had the, he was on a, um, he was freestyling. He was going in on Apple, how they was doing people and, you know, all the things that we shouldn't deal with Spotify. He had a little, um, a little concert or something that he did, right? And at that point, all the black people got behind him. We looked at, I think he had like Nicki Minaj, Usher, all these different people in hip hop was like, you know, on, they painted this picture, like, you know, they had shares in the company. I remember that, you know, vividly. And then we all went with it and say, you know what? I ain't going to do Apple, you know what I mean, no more. I'm going to do, you know what I'm saying? I'm um, title, even to this day. Yep. You got title, I got title. I'm thinking about getting rid of it, <laughs> but I got title, you know what I'm saying? So... When I first talked, I talked about this the other day. This really, it never really, you know, crossed my mind. So, shout out to academics, man, for bringing this back to everybody's attention because he has some valid points, some very valid points about Jay Z doing what Jay Z did. But um, before I go in, Sam, man, I want definitely want to hear what you got. What's your thought is on this and Jay Z, you know, selling his company? It's he's right. Academics is right, and he did bring up a lot of great points. Now. A lot of people give us criticism for keeping it real when it comes to Jay-Z and not separating the business from the music, but we don't care about that. We always are going to do that, no matter what anybody says. And when you look at, I could just think about myself personally, right? Because always been influenced by Jay-Z. Yeah. Put down the Chris style, grab a spades, say no more. I'm about 21, 22 years old. When I can afford something, fuck the Chris style. I'm going to go drink this. Right. Boom. Oh, Diddy got Ciroc? I'm going to go get me some motherfucking Ciroc. That's facts. Boom. Oh, oh, Hove owns title? My favorite rapper owns a mute. 
done. But then you look at all, it, it almost kind of reminds me of coming to America. Let's get all the black Damn. dollar, all the black dollar, all the black dollar, and then just to give it to somebody else. Give it to somebody that doesn't look like us, something that doesn't act like us, can't benefit from us. And I would not have a problem with anything Jay-Z did because you can create businesses and sell them to whoever you want. Your dollar is your dollar. And we give you a lot of credit for being the billionaire that you are because of some of the great business moves that you do. Mm -hmm. But when you campaign for the people to buy into a product because it is black owned, because it is black used, and you give examples of other places who aren't that don't do us right. And then we buy into that only for you now to go and sell it to the very people that you say don't buy from. You're leaving us out. Well, n now what? No explanation. No care he went up in the 40%. world. His stock went up 40%. I was like, what he's worth went up 40% though. Oh, you're damn right. <laughs> that portfolio is supposed to go up. And that, <laughs> Hey, great businessman. Yeah. That's why you shouldn't have said it. Don't go to Apple. Don't go here. Come here. If that was All just right. a marketing plan and a plot, cool. But you seem very genuine when you said that shit. And when people listen to your raps, because you don't talk often, people mm -hmm. listen to what you're saying within your lyrics and yeah. take them as gospel. Yeah. Not everybody, and maybe people shouldn't, but when people are fans of yours, and they listen to what you're saying, and they look at your body of work, a billionaire, successful, this, this, why wouldn't somebody listen and get some jewels from what you're saying? And what we, when you say things, it, it, it kind of resonates with us, but then right. you do the opposite. I just, I don't know. I don't like it. Now, what got me, man, is the whole, the title staff thing. All these, you know, um, great colleges where his brothers and sisters at, minority people all over the country, you know, uh, we can go to every state and then great colleges where you get prospects that come out, New Jersey, Atlanta, California, you know, uh, Georgia, Louisiana, all great colleges. And there's way more than that where young black professionals come up. You mean to tell me none of them could be, you know, on a higher ups that title? This, you know what I'm saying? Like, so it's like it, it, you got to ask yourself that question. Like, yo, what is this really going on when you're, when you, you know, coming in the, the vein of black empowerment? You know, um, your company should look like that at least. It, I mean, but then, you know, we, we, we go, we trickle down even further and go into, OK, now you get this company to where it is and now you sell it off. There's nothing wrong with that. Like, like we all say, but you kind of deceive the people, not kind of, you deceive the people. Because now it's like, all right, man, F title. Like, I might as well go back to Apple. It's on my phone. Right. And then a lot of people have been saying this over the years, with, you know, even with the, the Brooklyn the Barclays Center, the NFL deal. You know, a lot of people have been saying this about Jay Z. Like, all right, he's been taken away, you know, from the people. But here, I want to bring this up, though, Sam, man. I want to ask you this. Mm -hmm. How can we balance all of this, though? Because you got this on one hand, him selling um, the liquor and him selling title, but then you got the justice reform thing. Where he's working behind the scenes, you know what I mean? Not even behind the scenes, in front to try to get different things, you know, changed within the prison system and different things like that. How do we weigh these two things against each other? Because at the end of the day, you don't we got to weigh like, all right, some somebody's doing good over here. This may be bad, but what they're doing over here. So how do you weigh them together? A lot of people may not like what I got to say. Throw it out there. Because when you, you talk about prison reform and what he has going on, I thought about it as I was talking. It's like, okay, you're doing business. With private Damn. prisons. Damn. <laughs> Am yeah, I right or yeah, wrong? That's what it is. He's doing business with private prisons. And we know private prisons, what they historically and what they fill up their, their, their prisons with. And we see what's going on. So when we see out here in the media that, okay, Jay-Z's fighting for this and Jay-Z's fighting for that or this person's fighting for this. And we see all this good that's coming out of it. Right. But you're doing business with somebody that is allowing you to do something, well, what are they getting for their investment? What are they getting for their return? It's business. So I'd say, like, let's just look at that whole situation, 360 degrees, yeah. and not put that on the scale when it comes to balancing out what he's done good and done Damn. bad for us. He's a businessman. That's it. And he said it. I'm not a businessman. I'm a businessman. Let me handle my business. Damn. Hey, man, let him handle his business. But in black, in, in black empowerment, yeah, you got to empower yourself first. But then it has to trickle down, though. Yeah. It has to trickle down to the people underneath you. It has to trickle down to building communities, building institutions, real institutions that could be, you know, um, ran and dominated by your people, just like any other race of people would do. We talked about it. You know, people, they, they work together to a certain point, but they keep all that wealth circulating within that community. Yeah. And to, you know, I don't care how big it gets, like the wealth continues to circulate because when the wealth circulates, the people get to enjoy the fruits of their labor. So when you go and sell it off, you know, I just think that, 
you know, um, you send mixed signals to the people. But um, great point about the prison thing, man. That's just real talk. That That's real. It ain't like, you know, he's up there talking about, all right, let's change the law with this and that. Nah, let me get, you know, um, you know, break ankle monitors. You know what I mean? I'm a, it's some, you know, I'm something crazy. Like, yo, Let me get dog. this person now. Let me get this person now. Let me fight for this. Right. Put that in the media. I don't know, man. Yeah. I nah, we're going to keep it real over here, man, on Hip Hop Uncensored Podcast. But I thought that was a great, you know, um, you know, story for us to do here on the podcast, man. And I hope that everybody enjoyed the podcast today. And if you did, if you did, most likely you did, man, go ahead and hit that five-star rating and make sure you leave a comment.